back again with sine and cosine equations that you will be writing based on a graph. So to start, let's review again of being able to find all of this information. You should be able to do this very quickly by now. You know that the amplitude is 7. You know that your frequency is 4 in 2 pi because remember you must factor out this 4 first. And that's going to give you a phase shift of pi over 8 to the left, a vertical displacement of 6 down. Your period is going to be your, since this is in radians, 2 pi divided by 4, which is going to give you pi over 2. Your node line is y equals a negative 6. Your max is 1, your minimum is a negative 13, and you are good to go. So, how are we going to write the sinusoidal curve? Well, first you have to decide if you want it to be a cosine or a sine curve. You actually get to pick. It does not matter which one you want to use. Then you need to find the node line. That's not that difficult. That's just the average of your high and your low. Then you're going to find the amplitude based on, well, just take the distance from the low all the way to the high and divide it by 2. And then what are you going to do from there? Well, how about you write an inequality to find your B and C, the frequency and the phase shift. And then you're just going to put it all together. So this is what we're going to do you know your crest is 2.56. You know your trough is 0.34. So all you have to do is figure out the average of those two, and that will help you find your um, node and the amplitude. So to get from here to here, top to bottom, so top, to bottom is 2.22. All you have to do there is subtract. 2.56 minus 0.34 is 2.22, which means your amplitude is half of that. So your amplitude is 1.11. So now you also have to find your vertical shift, also known as your D value. So to find that, all you have to do is think about what this is. And again, you just need to find the average of those guys. So you add these two together and divide by 2, and you find that this is going to be 1.45. So again, you add these two values together and take half of it. It's just the average. The node is the average of the high and the low and you get that as a 1.45. So now we also have to think about where are we going to start? Where are we going to stop? So you can have multiple examples to do this using sine or cosine. Let's think about it as a sine. For sine, we can start here and we can go up. For sine, we can start here and go down. We can have a positive sign or we can have a negative sign. Now, you can also, if you want to, start up top and work your way down. That would be a positive cosine. Or you can start down at the bottom and work your way up. That would be a negative cosine. So we have all sorts of different options we can use here. So really, it's up to you. All depends on where you want to start. So for the purpose of these notes, we are actually going to do both. So for the sign, we're going to start, we're going to do this, uh, we're going to do this positive sign one first. So that has a start at negative 16, which we know is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to. And remember, you have to go one complete cycle, which is going to stop you right here at a positive 20. So now you kind of need to work backwards a little bit. So this first number needs to become 0. So that's adding 16. So we're going to add 16 to these three pieces, bringing you to 0. 
bringing you to theta plus 16 and bringing you to 36. So now what we have to do is we have to get this to become 360 because when we, when we were originally doing these, we went from 0 to 360 or 0 to 2 pi. Now we're trying to get back to that 0 to 360. So to do that, you need to multiply everything by a 10. So that's going to give you a 0, and this is 10 times theta plus 16. And guess what? You've got all the information you really need right now. So to write this sine function, um, remember, the big part of it is right here in the middle. So what you're going to do is you're going to have your y equals. You're going to have your amplitude, which we stated as 1.11. And this that we picked was a positive sign. And then you're going to have your 10 times your theta plus 10. I'm sorry, that's a 16 I have written there. And then you're going to finish with your vertical shift, which we found is our node line of 1.45. That's it. That's all it takes to do these. Now you could have done it with the negative. Now, if you would have chose to do the negative, remember, you would have just started at 2, and you would have gone all the way till you got to 38. Now, what would have happened with that? Not much. You would subtract 2 from both sides here. So that would go from 0 to theta, which would bring you over here to 36. And then you would still have to multiply by the 10. So this part's going to be the same no matter what you do. What would have been the only difference, though? The only difference is once you would have subtracted that 2, this would give you your 0 is less than or equal to 10 times theta minus 2, which is less than or equal to 360. So this would have changed to a theta minus 2. This is still going to be the same. The sine 10 is still going to be the same. The 1.11 is almost going to be the same. The only difference is, is this is where sine starts by going down, so that's a negative 1.11. Okay, so it really doesn't matter. Now, we also have two options for cosine. We're only going to do one. The node is still the same. The amplitude is still the same. The only difference is, where are you starting? So we're going to start uh, for this one at the top. We'll do a positive cosine. So your start is at a negative 7. It's going to end at back to the top is 29. You're going to add 7, so that becomes theta plus 7. And that's going to still give you your negative, or that's going to give you your 0, which is less than or equal to. And go figure, you add 7, look, there's your 36 again. And that's because no matter how you do it, you're always going to get that B value to be the same. Um, and no matter if you're doing a positive sign, a negative sign, a positive cosine, or a negative cosine. Okay, so you still got that part. That work doesn't change. So your final answer would just be Y is equal to a 1.11. And that's going to be a cosine this time of 10 times this is theta plus 7 and then your plus 1.45. So again, everything is the same except for this little number right here. And that all depends on whether or not you choose to do a positive or negative sine or cosine. Okay? That's it. That's how you do it. So here you go. Here's another example. This one is for you to try. And then we are done. Now, I challenge you to do one sine and one cosine. And then I am actually just going to list multiple different answers you could have based on where you want to start and where you want to stop. So remember, you can start here. You can start down here. You can start over here. You can start up here. You can start over here. But remember, you don't want to go too far because you need to be able to have a stopping point. So the furthest you can go would be out here if you choose to go find what that number is. Um, because it's not listed here on the scale, so you'd have to do that yourself. So to be honest with you, 
I would do one of these strikes start here and stop here or start down here maybe start here start here start here you know but beyond that you're gonna have to start finding pieces so I wouldn't start any further than that but I'll let you choose so I challenge you to do one sine one cosine I will list six different answers and you see if yours match so go ahead and give it a try all right so what are we gonna do here which one of these did you get um, there was all sorts of different ones you can do. Now, a little trick for you. Um, you don't have to do all the starting and stopping to figure out your shift. That you can just pick by saying, well, this has got to be pi over 18 to the left if I started here. This is pi over 18 to the right. This is no horizontal shift at all. This is pi over 9 to the right when I'm going down. So all of that you could do from the graph. But the question is, what number did you get here for your B? How did you do that? Well, that's where you need to sit and look at this for a moment, okay? How are you going to get this B? So remember, your period, which is this, your period is equal to 2 pi divided by B. So if your period is 2 pi over 9, and that's equal to 2 pi divided by B, in this case, B has to be 9. So that's how we got the B value of 9, okay? So I just wanted to show that one step. Otherwise, if you have any of these uh, 3 sine, any of these 3 cosine, you are good to go. This is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.